We've now got predictions for AQA GCSE English Literature Paper 2. Now this paper covers modern text, anthology poetry and unseen poetry and we've put together some suggestions and tips to help you. Alongside your set texts you'll need to be ready to explore themes, characters and writers methods always linking back to context where it's relevant. Now here as always in these videos I'm going to talk through likely areas of focus based on past papers and patterns in the exam based on our teachers predicted papers. Remember these are just predictions so it's important to revise anything you're unsure of or unfamiliar with but use this as a smart starting point to sharpen your exam strategy and build confidence just going into paper two. So we're going to start with an inspector calls then blood brothers then we'll move on to anthology poetry starting with love and relationships and then power and conflict then I'll just give you some tips for the unseen poetry section too. So please obviously use the timestamps to skip to the text that suits you. So for this year's An Inspector Calls question on AQA Paper 2, one of our predictions is a focus on the theme of justice or related ideas like fairness or responsibility, punishment or accountability. The question might ask how Priestley explores justice directly or it could be framed around whether characters face consequences for their actions or how fairly different people are treated. If this does come up, you could explore how Eva Smith is denied justice, how the inspector acts as a moral force calling for accountability, and how some characters like Sheila respond to the idea of taking responsibility, while others like Mr and Mrs Burling do not. This actually also leads into our second predicted option, which focuses specifically on Mr Burling, perhaps with a question about how far he refuses to change. In this case, you'd focus on his actions, his repeated dismissal of responsibility and how Priestley uses him to represent those who resist progress and social reform. Now, ultimately, you want to make sure you revise quotations that cover lots of different themes. And the idea of justice is a great one to revise because you'll naturally be revisiting quotes for responsibility, fairness and different character reactions to Eva's death and whether they think that she was deserving of more support. So hopefully that helps with Inspector Calls. We're now going to move on to Blood Brothers. So do skip forward if you haven't studied this. So here we're predicting one possible question could focus on Linda as a victim. The question might ask how Russell presents her in this way, but even if the word victim isn't used, similar ideas could come up like sympathy or powerlessness or how Linda is affected by the choices and actions of others. In your answer, you could explore how she's caught between Mickey and Edward how her life is shaped by class and gender, and kind of how Russell presents her as someone with little control over her future. Then the second possible question we're predicting is on violence as an important theme. This would give you a chance to talk about both physical and emotional violence in the play, from childhood fights to the tragic ending and how Russell presents it to reflect the tension caused by class division, inequality and repression. Whether you choose to write about Linda or violence, be sure to link your ideas back to how Russell uses these elements to highlight key messages about society, class and opportunity. And do just make sure you have a broad knowledge of a range of characters and themes so that you're ready for whatever the exam throws at you. My tip is to revise the themes that will give you quotes that fit into lots of other themes too. Okay, we're now gonna move on to anthology poetry as well. Starting with love and relationships, the poem we're thinking that might show up is When We Two Parted as the named poem, with the idea of longing or a need in romantic relationship potentially being the big idea. So if the question asks you to compare how a longing is presented in romantic relationships, it's important to remember that longing can take many forms, whether it's sort of emotional or physical or even unspoken. Now, in Byron's poem, longing is tied to loss and regret, with the speaker looking back on a painful parting that still haunts them. A strong comparison could be made with Sonnet 29, I think of thee, where longing is intense and physical, but ultimately fulfilled. You might also consider Love's Philosophy, which expresses a sort of frustrated desire for closeness or neutral tones, where the speaker longs for connection, but is left with emotional distance. Whichever poem you do choose, focus on how both poets use a language structure and form to present that feeling of wanting something or someone that feels out of reach and how that longing shapes the relationship as a whole. Okay, let's now move on to power and conflict. Now for the power and conflict we'll start, our teacher has predicted a question on the theme of control with the prelude as the named poem. 
If this does come up, it will likely ask you to compare how ideas about control are presented in the prelude and one other poem from the anthology. In Wordsworth's poem, control is explored through nature, how the speaker at first feels confident and in control as he rows across the lake, but then is completely overwhelmed by the sheer power of the natural world, symbolised by the huge looming mountain. It's an emotional and psychological loss of control that lingers long after the moment has passed. Strong poem to compare this with, and one that hasn't actually come up either, would be Storm on the Island, which also explores human vulnerability against natural forces. Or My Last Duchess, where control takes on a much darker, more possessive tone through the Duke's authority and manipulation. Azimandius is another excellent option because it shows the illusion of control through power that eventually sort of crumbles. Whichever poem you choose, if this idea was to come up, just make sure you focus on how the poets use structure, language and tone to show who or what is in control and what happens when that control is challenged or lost. OK, so those are our predictions. We're now just going to talk about section C, the unseen poetry section. Last of all, let's talk about unseen poetry, which is section C, Evacuate English Literature Paper 2. In this section, you'll respond to two questions, both based on poems you haven't studied before. The first question is worth 24 marks and focuses on a single unseen poem. Here you'll be assessed on AO1, which is your ability to form a clear and thoughtful response supported with quotes. And then AO2, which is all about analysing the writer's methods, language, structure and form and explaining their effects. So start by reading the poem carefully, underline keywords and phrases that stand out or seem important and jot down your first impressions about the poem's tone, message or emotions in relation to the question. In your response, just don't just kind of spot techniques, but explain how these choices help the poet communicate meaning and affect the reader. Try to organise your answer clearly, perhaps moving through the poem or grouping points around key ideas. But my opinion here is that you shouldn't really be trying to learn a new paragraph structure or essay structure at this point, because it's really close to the exam now and you won't have time to get feedback on it in a mock exam from your teacher and will likely have practised another structure if you're in school anyway. I think the internet can be really useful for this, but probably not this close to the exam, so just be careful. Anyway, next in the second question, which is worth eight marks, you'll be given a second poem that links in theme to first. This question only assesses AO2, so your focus should be on how the two poets present their ideas, not just what the poems are about. I'd aim for about two comparative paragraphs here on methods. Look for similarities and differences in tone, structure, imagery, or word choices and comments on their effect. Overall though, time management is key here. You wanna spend about 30 minutes on the first question and about 15 minutes on the second. And remember, there's no right interpretation. So long as you understand what's actually going on and don't completely misunderstand. The examiners are looking for your ability to engage with the poem, look up your ideas and explore how meaning is created. So those are our predictions and tips. We really hope they come in handy, but as always, don't forget we aren't psychic. We look at trends to best support you and guide revision. Best of luck with your GCSE Literature Paper 2.